Welcome. How are you doing? Are you doing okay? This is Art House Radio. I am Troy. Thanks for joining me. Welcome back if you're a returning listener, and welcome for the first time if this is the first time you're ever listening to this. I'll try not to bore you. This week I saw Nobody, finally. It streams on HBO starring Bob Odenkirk, directed by Ilya Neyshuler, a uh, Russian director, did a lot of violent things in the past, young director. Um, I've only seen clips of some of his first films, and oh, they're, they're, uh, it's a lot of blood. But, you know, I don't know if that's what the whole movie's about. This movie has a lot of blood too, action, drama. I would say, right off the bat, that I would give it a 6.5 out of 10 stars. So, I enjoyed it. I don't know that I would ever watch it again, and that doesn't mean that I don't think it's entertaining. It was. Um, but after I first watched it, I thought to myself, mm, uh, I don't know. And it was entertaining, but I think the more the time has gone on, I enjoyed it a little bit more. So let me tell you quickly a couple of things that I liked about it, and I think that maybe that'll entice you to watch it. First, Bob Odenkirk is great. He's always great. Funny, a couple of scenes are really funny. Definitely worth the watch. Um, there's a scene where some rowdy, lawless, annoying youths are on a bus and causing trouble. And if you like seeing that get resolved, you're going to enjoy at least that scene of this movie. And I would say the maybe the one thing that didn't work for me was the villain. You know, he was a scary guy, but it, see, everything seemed coincidental. It did seem a little bit to touch on John Wick a bit. And maybe John Wick touches on something else in terms of there's a guy who's living the life. He, you know, he gets up, he has coffee, takes the kids to work. The wife doesn't really bone him anymore. Uh, she, she doesn't, maybe she just doesn't respect him. I don't know. He seems like kind of a loser. Uh, turns out, you know, he, he uh, has like this past of being an ass kicker and all this. So it's a little bit in John Wick in terms of going back to your old life, getting pulled back into your old life. Except in this case, I think he enjoyed it, whereas I don't know that John Wick enjoyed going back to his old life. I think he was content with his dog and his car, but that kind of got derailed. But anyway, I digress. Um, I would I would definitely recommend you see this film. Like I said, I, I don't think I would ever watch it again, but it is on HBO streaming. I think it's worth your time. Bob Odenkirk is always great. Um, and, and you know, if you like drama, you know, one of the things I should say that, that may have affected my viewing of it, which is really interesting to me, like the context in which you see a film affects your opinion of the film, and maybe forever. Maybe it sticks with you. I had, before I had started, I saw an advertisement. Maybe it was on HBO, I don't remember, but it was for a cop show starring someone from Ozark, the son of the Kansas City mob. I don't want to give anything away here, but bullet crotch. That's just it's a unique thing, I guess. Anyway, starred him in this cop show based in Chicago. And I just remember thinking, do we need another cop show? Like, what are you going to do that's going to be different from the millions of cop shows we already have? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe you could apply that uh, unfairly to movies and say, well, why, why do you watch, you know, Heat or you know, whatever, name your cop show, L.A. Confidential or whatever. And it's like, okay, I get it. But there's something different about movies because it's two hours and done. Movies are like the guest that comes over and stays the appropriate amount of time. TV series can be like The Walking Dead is still there. Like, they're like, well, you know, we're just going to crash here. It's like, no, you're not. It was a dinner party. You need to go. So if you want me to watch like 13 seasons of NCSI and, 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 all of the spawns that have come since then, the the homages and ripoffs, if you will, like I, I can't imagine you'd ever get me to do that because I don't know what you're gonna do that's gonna be different. Done with cop shows. But maybe that affected my viewing of Nobody. I don't think so. I tried to see it in the theater so many times during the pandemic. I've only, you know, I've only been to the theater twice, I think, during the pandemic, and that was recently, once. You know, like I was vaxxed and uh, I was, um, it was just like a matinee. One was a birthday thing, which was great. Uh, yes. But uh, I, I, I tried to see in theater and I, I wish that I had because that changes your experience too, right? 
you see something in the theater, that's why, I don't know why people don't bring vintage movies back more often. They should. Um, but that's another discussion for another episode. This is Troy signing off. Art House Radio, patreon.com slash Art House Radio. Like and subscribe this. Leave me a comment, too. Like, I, I, I get that this is... Uh, sh- being listened to on different platforms so i never know where you're at where are you how are you and and when are you uh thanks for listening and i just want to drop one hint for the next episode i am watching on criterion channel johnny suede starring brad pitt can't wait to talk about that one really interesting Uh, has a lot of weird feels to it kind of a comedy um i can't never remember her name but she was in being john malkovich john cusack's love interest Uh, She's really good. I like her. All right. Until next time, have a great week, great rest of your week, great weekend, and stay safe. See you next time.